so I'm redoing my house in the sort of with arts and crafts style or mission style trim. Um, I'm going to show you in this video, I already made a video about the baseboards. In this video I'm going to talk about how to do the door trim the way I've done it here. Um, just like before, this is designed by James Wright, who has a channel called Wood by Wright uh, that I really recommend you check out. Um, so this is sort of his design and, and I'll show you how I did it um, as a DIYer rather than as a really professional woodworker like, like James Wright. Yeah, so let's get to work on this uh, door frame. So if you have to replace the door frame, we can talk about that now. Um, you know, if you have pre-hung doors or something, then you probably don't want to do this. My house is like 100 years old, so everything is just the same wood everywhere. Um, so I'm going to replace the, <coughs> the frame and then probably that's the first thing you need to do and then kind of all the trim can go out from there. Um, what I was able to do this time was actually leave, I don't know if you can see it, but I left. The, the next room is probably not going to get done until next year. You know, I'm going to work on that room and then this room last. So I tried to leave the original trim so that I don't have, um, you know, a, a hole in the wall sticking out into my living room. So what you're going to want then are these six inch boards um, that you've stained on three sides or treated however you know finished on three sides whatever your plan is. Um, the door is seven feet in my house so these are already cut to seven feet um, and what you're going to want eventually is um, the trim you want sort of a quarter inch reveal sticking out of the trim. And so, with the old trim here, it's actually pretty easy to work that out. And then the other thing, so we can put these two in, and they can just sit here for a minute. The other thing is that the original door was 30 inches wide. So if we measure the way this is now, it's pretty close to that. Um, but this isn't going to be perfectly straight, and you want these to be plumb. So that's what the shims are for. Um, that you can basically help hold this thing straight. And actually this side is pretty good. So you're also going to want to make sure that this is square uh, at the bottom and the top. It's sort of a pain uh, to fit a door in if it's a little bit wider for some reason. I mean, if they're plumb, it should be fine, but it's always worth checking. You know, so I've got 30 and a quarter. And 30 and a quarter. So this is actually, this doorway is actually surprisingly straight, given that this house is so old. Um, so I can just shoot these straight in. Um, you want these to line up with the wall, and then the trim is going to go kind of on the wall. And on these. So, There you go, that's the beginnings of your door frame. Really easy. Um, again, if you're buying pre-hung doors or something, you could probably skip this step. But I like everything to match. So now we need to cut uh, the top part of the frame. Which is basically 32. Okay, so the opening is 30 inches. These are, uh, you know, three-quarter inch. So we've got our 32-inch uh, top piece. Um, the nice thing is you don't have to worry that much about what the ends look like because they're just going to be completely hidden by the trim. So you want this facing down. There's a piece of old plaster in here. And you do want these sort of flush with... whole frame. There you go. And then here's where some of these shims might come in handy because there's a fair bit of space. There's a fair bit of space. I would say maybe three centimeters at the top there. So again, this is just some scrap wood that I've got lying around just to close the space in. And honestly, you could probably, this one's so wide, I could almost use like a two by four or something up there. So 
So normally you might actually need the shims along the side to make it plumb, but for uh, just sheer luck, the one that I've uh, <laughs> left to film for you um, is, is already plumb. But to do that, you would just obviously stick these in as you need to and, until the thing is plumb. But um, I've seen people do this where you actually put the, this together on the ground and then lift it into place. You can go ahead and do that if you prefer. I don't really see the difference. This feels quite a bit easier to me. Okay, so with the baseboards done, the next thing that I am going to do is trim around the door frame. And so the basic idea is you've got blocks down here that are uh, as wide as these five and a half inch boards. And so the idea is that you're gonna run these up, obviously the full length. And what you want is a quarter inch reveal here and a quarter inch reveal here. So you'll run basically two, you'll run two up either side. So, you know, I would cut it up here so that you get the quarter inch reveal. Put one on either side. And the next one that goes on top of these is uh, this one and a quarter deep uh, versus half inch thick. So you, you uh, um, rip these down on your table saw. And the idea is that they will go sort of on top of these. And then what you get is sort of a half inch sticking out uh, the front of this. Then you put this one along the top again uh, with the, uh, on top of this. And then this is uh, two by two, which I think is, yeah, it's a you know, two by two, which is actually one and a half by one and a half. That goes on the very top. And then this quarter inch uh, bead, again, it's all square. That's the nice thing about the Craftsman style. So anyone with the table saw can very easily make square bead. You just uh, rip it down. Make sure you don't slice off your fingers. And these are the, basically the three pieces that you need to make the door. All right, so let's start putting in this door trim. What you need to do first is measure the height. So there's a couple ways to do this. You can always just take your tape and measure the distance and then cut it. You can also take a knife, which will make a nice clean mark compared to a pen. And Work it off like that, and then we just go to our miter saw and get it cut. And what you can do is you can just sort of line it up on the bottom with the block with your quarter inch reveal, tack it in place. Make sure that you get that quarter inch reveal the whole way up. Tack it again, and then just make sure. Not going anywhere. Do the same on the other side. Okay, so the next step is this one and a quarter by half inch piece that, that I ripped down on the table saw. That's going to go at the top um, as a piece of sort of trim between the six inch board. So, what you need to do is measure the width at the top. So, we got 41 and three quarters. And what we want is sort of a half inch sticking out this way and this way to add some depth to it. So if this is 41 and 3 quarters, we're going to cut it at 42 and 3 quarters. That way we get half inch on this side, half inch coming out this way, and all around. Just add some depth. This is, uh, the sides are going to be visible on this. So, um, you know, you want to give it a quick sam. This is 220. All right, so then. Pick your best side, have that facing down. Now you can uh, you can put the top together in one piece on the ground, or you can put it in place. Um, honestly, I don't see a difference. This feels easier to me because I can line everything up as I go. So again, half inch sticking out in the front and on either side. I'm just eyeballing it.
The next piece is going to be uh, six inch or five and a half, just like this. So this was 41 and three quarters, so we want it to line up with these pieces. So if this is 41 and three quarters, so you want to cut it at 41 and three quarters. Again, the grain's going to be visible. Give it a quick sand. Um, this one has two stairs that go upstairs, kind of protruding into it. So I, I have to cut an angle in the, the piece that's going to go across the top of the door. And you can see I've tried on a scrap a couple of different, you know, I measured the angle, but you know, I'm actually, I'm actually a math person in my day job. And even I get confused by these angles. Probably a master carpenter wouldn't, but we're DIYing this, right? So, you know, I cut a few angles, figured out it's pretty close to 33 that I can uh, stick this in here, and it's it's pretty level. Um, and so, um, yeah, so here's one where I've cut at the same angle at 33, it slides right in. And then measure the top from, I want it to be flush over here, and that's four and a quarter inches to the angle. But what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut it intentionally. Um, wide, right? I can always trim down, but I can't add if I cut too much. So we're going to start with that sort of a cut. And then we're going to ease it back until it's nice and flush. Again, a master carpenter would do a much better job than this, but we are DIY. Okay, so I've made the first cut. The hope is that it's a little bit bigger than we need and we can trim it down. <laughs> Actually, we got lucky and it's going to probably fit on the first try. That's pretty surprising. And then just nail it in. Yeah, you could build this down on the floor and hang it up if you wanted. I don't really see the difference, to be honest. Okay, and then again, uh, since we didn't attach this, we only tacked this in with two nails. Uh, you want to kind of cover everything up and shoot it in. Okay, so the next piece it's going to be the piece here that's uh, one and a half, right? So this is basically two by two. I've stained it on three sides. What you want for the style that I'm doing here is an inch hanging over either end, right? So this door is 41 and three quarters. So you would cut this at 43 and three quarters. Now, of course, I've got this stairway coming in. So mine is a bit strange because I had to cut the angle. I think it's still worth showing, right? So it's going to butt up against the stairway with an inch overhang on this side. But on a normal doorway, and I'll show you one of those in a second, you want an inch off of both sides. And what this does is it just it gives it sort of like staircase of chunkiness as you're going up that I think is, is quite nice. So what I decided to do was to make this half inch bead and put it uh, on like this. And then you just need a little tiny piece that's three quarters. Definitely hang on to the little bits of this because you do need a fair bit of small tiny pieces to finish off the corners. Okay, and then just for the just for the sake of demonstration, here here's a more normal door that doesn't have stairs protruding into it. Like I said, an inch on either side of this uh, two by two block, and then you put the um, half inch bead that you make, um, kind of wrapping around to clean it um, to clean it up. For the for the bead, you might consider using brads that are a bit uh, finer, a bit sh uh, shorter than the finished nails you're putting everything else in. If you find it splitting, consider using uh, smaller nails. But yeah, there you go. That's the door frame and the door trim um, finished. So there you go. I think this was a pretty easy build, maybe a little harder than the baseboards, um, particularly if you have to do the jams. But yeah, let me know what you think about this. Uh, leave a like, share this with someone, and uh, consider subscribing to the channel. And yeah, let me know what you think about uh, a video about finishing the wood. That's not what this video is about, but I'd be... Uh, 
happy to make that video if you guys want me to talk about wood and, and how, I, how I stained and finished the, these, this wood.